I mean, one thing that G2 should know by now, even just if you watch some demos on Dust2 uh, for TSM, is that Cajun B is probably one of the best players that actually help, uh, has the off on the car, car side with A long. He does such a good job there, you know, even if he gets flashed, he still managed to at least get one or two every single time. Uh, and especially if you don't even have a flashbang. Well, it's up to Fox once again. He wins that battle in middle. He's actually been doing that a couple of times, but then they can't really pick it up afterwards, even as they get the entry frag, which is supposed to be doing very well. Mike later there picking up Carrigan, trying to sneak him, and that is a bit of a change for TSM, not a play they've been doing a lot. And some teams really do love pushing up a dark. Um, I think Envy, especially our, uh, our team, they even go for double pushes into upper. Yeah, and for G2 now, like you were saying, that you don't really have any control despite getting the entries. G2 actually have no map controls. They actually don't know what's going on. So the best, most of the times, I really hope that they reduce the beast with coming in here, but it needs to go fast because Sipnix is just about to end up rotating to see the spawn. That oh, there we go. Now they need to go. Him. Yeah, I mean, Dupree, he had an AWP as well in the smoke. It's very hard to imagine how he could have come out on that one live, but yeah, they are moving. They're putting a lot of speed behind him. Jake and controlling middle while the bomb is going down and no saving here for TSM. It's the last round. They might as well try and go for it and in the corner gonna end up going down good double kill there from rain and michael Elliott both so 10-5 is an overall score line considering how this game played out i i i would have thought g2 could have got a bit more out of this it looked like in the beginning right when they when they ended up winning the um, the anti-eco and then you know just tsm just wrecking dreams once more and just re um, re-won that again but yeah it's it's looking very grim for g2 now you know, for TSM sport, I've always said that they, on Dust 2 especially, that they are a very good CT, CT team. I think if we were to compare both sides for TSM, I think that, you know, their seat side is definitely better than their T side. But that, that doesn't mean that, you know, they're bad on, the, on their T side either. I think that this is going to be extremely difficult for G2 to even be able to get back into the game. If you had to, to sort of, um, you know, almost make a path for how they can get back in. I mean, what springs to mind for me would be winning a pistol and going straight to double orb. You know, Fox and Mike Lele both shutting down. Is that is that a viable strategy, you think? Yeah, I mean, you see TSM, you see a lot of teams actually, especially on those two having the two, uh, the dual ops. You see NIP with Force and Alu, uh, Fnatic with all of Mice and JW. Uh, and it's actually really good because the map is so open and so it's a lot of long distance uh, qu uh, combat. So. It would be kind of wise for G2, and if they don't decide to do that, one thing that I would love to see again is just don't be afraid. You have to put pressure on TSM because the thing is, they are very good at taking map control. And if you don't try to defend that in any single way, then TSM will just have a field day with you. Well, we do have a little bit of time left here before we go into the second half. About 20 seconds, so we'll see if G2 can, uh, can make this one work. This time, they will have the advantage of the USPS. Um, TSM with Glocks maybe more. Hang on. What kind of round would you like to see out of them? A, a, a quick round here where they get close with the Glocks, or uh, are there, is there a different trick they could go for on the Danish side? I mean, generally on Dust 2, since it's so uh, since the, the, it's so many long distance uh, duels that you can get, you initially want to actually have a very fast paced pistol round. Because if you keep on doing these long duels and just play defensive, it's just going to benefit the CTs. Because, like you know, like we were saying before, with the USPs. They can just stand there. If they get a pick, you know, even a headshot, that's a one kill, right? So they need to do something fast here. And you see here, Carrigan with actually double smoke, or one smoke and two flashbangs, Sip, Sip XXO as well with a smoke, so. And they've got Device picking up the, uh, what we call the raid boss build here. Armor and Tech 9 and Dupree out on long. Fox is close and Dupree hits a double headshot. And that's going to be Jacob and Fox gone. And a horrible start here to the second half for G2. Grenades rain on in. That smoke is still incomplete, but it's a little bit different if you don't have uh, more than a USP to try and kill people and you're that far away. Bomb is going to go down. Five versus three. They're going to gather up to see if they can retake the catwalk. Rain finally hitting a headshot, looking maybe for more, but they're not even going to give him a chance to fight very much. They end up falling back, and Kid is picked up on both Rain and Michael Lilly, which is a bit odd for a pistol round. Two kids like that. They're trying to see if they can get out here. Dupree looking for more. He's already got the double kill. Looking to see if he can make it a triple, and it will be all headshots for Dupree. 
and an 11-5 scoreline. Yeah, I really love that strat from TSM. Like I said, very fast paced. They bought two smokes. One went down in the middle and the other one was used to cover the, uh, the CT spawn uh, gap. And then they have two flashes that were just thrown out towards long and they just took it over so fast, getting the two initial frags. So help us out here, Fifaren. What does the smoke in middle do when they're pushing long and going for the A-bomb site? Well, they had, they, it was an A-split, right? So you had two, two guys just dropping suicide and rushing towards catwalk as well. So in case uh, G2 was playing perhaps maybe aggro catwalk or even just on the A-bomb site, they just basically, it's basically a sandwich. Now the road back for G2 is very much longer than it just was. 5-11 here. They've gone for the, the force up. Still Fox without the armors, trying to get a little bit more money in. CSAT 75, no deagles in play, which is what we saw when the when TSM were on the CT side. Yeah, no scouts either. And this is a, this is a very tough buy from G2 since they don't have any long distance weapons. Uh, they just have to basically rely on having the close quarters perhaps on the A bomb side. But it's only Fox they're actually just holding where I might play the C Good job for Michael Lele so far, taking down Device, and there might be more in store. He's still got a little bit of health, and Sipikas is very, very low at the moment. So four versus four, they've got a player out on long, and Jacob, I think, might be realizing that there's nobody coming from there, although Sip is checking. Bomb goes down, and now the retake is going to be very hard. I'm hoping maybe Jack Michael Lele could pick up one more kill. Carrigan with a headshot, and that's going to be the end of the round there. So it looked like maybe there was an opening, but... Um, yeah, but when... When you know that your opponents are already on the site planning the bomb, for G2, that they should actually just save their, their pistols and their armor. Just hold, just try and actually get some extra kills. You don't have to actually push, because the, the thing is what happened now is, instead of, instead of just saving the weapons, whereas you're going to be left with, you know, uh, not a single pistol on, on this coming round, then eventually, if you just end up saving that, maybe even an extra kill or two, you might have more weapons to work with, and you get another chance in possibly winning an eco. We are a couple of kills away here from being at 13-5, which is definitely a very decisive scoreline. Oh, the grenade, no armor up there either, and it's gonna... Well, actually, the scout, I guess, saved him from the grenade. Some some small mercy there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's gonna be the last man left here. One versus four, so... Now, I mean, this upcoming round is pretty much do or die time for G2, and um, I guess, well, guess we'll see what they've, uh, what they've got in store for us. One all picked up there, so it's only gonna be the single all. Yeah, and you see that actually Fox actually made a mistake there. He had five, $5,850. He had de decides to actually do buy the off, which is great, but he ends up buying armor and the head armor instead of get, you know, getting that extra smoke grenade, which is going to become very useful. He doesn't really need the head armor since they all have AKs and an op. Just keep that in mind in case it actually is something that he's going to need later on. It's definitely a very, very important thing to point out. Head armor is not useful against AKs. If they shoot you in the face, you'll be dead anyway. AWP will be even more dead. It's going to be still a minute and 20 seconds left here. And Dennis and Rain inside the B bomb site. So no mid control at all here for G2. Yeah, and I love what TSM's doing. They're playing so aggressive and just taking control of the map. You see Kerrigan have two guys down in mid here. Oh, and wall banging that very common spot for people to hold one smoke up. A double smoke in the middle here and a grenade on Michael Lele dropping a bit low. Let's see if they can actually make this work. Now they've got the full mid control here on the Danish side. Molotov reigning in as well, and Capri spraying furiously. Not going to tag up Michael Lele. Fox instead picking up one kill. Dennis pushing through. This is very nice. Dennis with a double kill. And now it's all up to the remaining player here for TSM. Cajun left. And nobody going down. Dennis going to clean up the round. Triple kill for him. Stealing the AWP. The timing for that aggressive push out of B-bomb side. Try and explain to us what happens if they're a little bit too early or a little bit too late with that timing, because it seemed like it was almost perfect. Yeah, I mean, what happened there for TSM, they actually decided to double smoke down in CT spawn just to make sure that they, he wasn't boosted just in case Kerrigan missed a shot. Michael Lane actually didn't have any, any flashbangs. What G2 did good there was that they actually had one guy all the way back in B-plat with two flashbangs, and Rain was very close to the B entrance. So he just flashed out two, and then... Oh, sorry, Dennis was the one by yeah. B. And he just ends up flashing out two, gets the initial one in seat spawn and then Kerrigan misses the up shot and just you know it was a great hold by G2 and very good very nice team play. So I would say one of the rare times where giving up mid control ends up working anyway yeah. that's a very dangerous way to try and hold B uh, but the timing was flawless uh, some very good counter shot that you guys are seeing here. Fox and Dennis they they end up stealing an AWP and now they've got the double up setup and it's a scout that's on Kerrigan so a little bit less powerful Unless you eat headshots. Fox is ready and waiting and a little bit scary, but Michael is close by to help him out. Kerrigan is there with the one headshot. Now, Michael is going to be careful. That scout you can jump and shoot with, so 
they've got to be respect that much at least and the bomb is making its way up as well kerrigan just dominating this a bomb site with nothing more than a scout are we really going to see one of these jumping shots kerrigan not tempting it just yet look at how far away they are on e on g2 they've got to make their way a lot closer here this is a retake they have to get they can't allow tsm to get this round but it might be very difficult then is making his way up as well mike Kaleli gonna go down rain is gone as well and wow this is definitely a disaster for the g2 team jacob not even sure he can survive the round yeah no great again great round by tsm uh when fox missed that initial shot it was basically game over already because they just lost all map control on the a bomb side and even despite the fact that jacob was still long so they had the long control they had the state spawn control tsm already really had cat control and you saw dupree actually he thought that they would uh, actually just end up saving so he was already up in b tunnels uh, but then they they, he, they got the call that okay they're actually pushing but for g2 there yeah having fox actually missed that shot uh, just cost them the round completely 21st round is going to be rolling in here. Two M4s being picked up on G2 and a single match seven and Deagle and five seven. That's what they've got to try and see if they can stop this TSM train. We did used to call them the freight train because once they sort of got going, they were really, really on to stop. And they seem still have that, that kind of quality, it seems like. And, and look at the difference from TSM's uh, anti-eco kind of versus G2's, right? So you see the, the kind of a team play coming in from TSM in middle with three, two or three guys that are just making sure that if someone ends up dying, there should always be a revenge frag. And Device is holding long for a push and KGB is holding. So you have the three guys, the core three guys in middle, they are the one working. They're the ones making the plays, whereas the other two are just basically just holding the flags. Yeah, so no one can sneak up behind them if you try and go in the middle, uh, even if you get a kill on someone might get refranked and you can certainly can't steal a rifle either and run away with which is kind of what tsm did to g2 right they stole some of those rifles and that made a big difference fox has already gone down here and this is looking like a bit of a slaughter as dupree and device are going to pick up one kill each leaving dennis and jacob left two well it's just five at the moment 30 seconds left but obviously an easy round from here on out uh for tsm not for kerrigan though they yeah, actually ended up missing the off shot which is why he went down to jacob with the mag seven but for dennis here again he just needs to save his weapon because just basing off of g2's money right now they have nothing and that you know this is make it or break it now it's going to be 15 to 6 in favor of tsm and you know there's no more mistakes can be made i feel like it's hard to find a silver lining right now for g2 i mean if we had to try and hype this up i guess what we could say is that if they did make a, a nine round comeback into overtime here then you know it'd certainly be one of the most impressive comebacks in csgo major history yeah especially versus a team like yeah. Solo, team solo mid which you know dust2 is arguably one of their best maps uh so yeah it would be a, a a huge uh, achievement for G2 if that actually ended up happening. I just don't see it happening. I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to stay positive here. You're not going to follow me down no, this road. <laughs> I'm not going to try that. Uh, All right. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think it's going to be a uh, game over here on the uh, round mm. 22. You're usually so cheerful. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's been a long day. <laughs> You've been pretty much on point with the prediction so far, so I'm, I'm tempted to join you as well. Dupree is going to be taking down Dennis Fox to go down and TSM. I mean, that mixed start there from G2 made us believe that maybe they had something that they could show us here. Some really good individual performances. Mike Hillel really showing up. Dennis having some good rounds in as well, but it's just not been enough here. Two versus four. And TSM probably, if, if ever there was one, the the favorites to at least make it to a grand finals here showing exactly why that is rain and michael lf two versus three right now see if they can stall this uh, victory for tsm just a little bit bomb is making his way back in here but i fear that he's making a lot of noise rain running in and he gets the kill goes down and um michael LLF, is that a blind shot through the smoke it just might have been and the bomb gets planted and now it is a one versus one michael LLF has a pretty decisive health advantage and Cajun, on the other hand, has a Molotov and a flashbang too. Let's see if he can get this. He doesn't have a kit, so he has to move a little bit quick. And Cajun just shuts him down. Oh, he jumped. 16 6 victory, and that's going to be TSM moving forward. Yeah, again, overall, very good performance by TSM. I mean, for me, they are the favorite to win this, uh, this tournament. Uh, having such a great uh, streak of wins uh, throughout the, uh, the online portion uh, for the past two, three months. Uh, with, with multiple uh, tournament winnings as well. For, um, 
for G2 actually, one thing that I did notice was that Rain was a little bit under par today, I'd say. He's one of, most of the times one of the go-to guys for G2 uh, as of late, and he, he really didn't make an impact at all this game, which is a shame. Yeah, I mean, kind of almost wish we could see another map just to see if G2 would have a similar problem on, on a different map, because you're right, a lot of their players never really got put into play. Uh, really, really rough game for them. I think they, they themselves expected a lot more, though actually the history between these two teams on Dust who is like this. It's been generally 16-6, I think 16-8 a couple of times, but yeah. it's been within that region. So TSM kind of just reaffirming that and saying we've, we're still going to be right there. Um, no issue at all. Down on the stage, we do have a red eye ready with the device, so take it away. Thank you very much, uh, devices with me. Congratulations. Straightforward win in the end, but let's talk about the start of the game. That Michael lady's a pain, isn't he? Oh yeah, that was a nice tech nine round with him. Uh, not much to say. Uh, it was amazing by him, yeah. But straightforward win, and, and I guess that's what you guys expected in this match. I mean, we played those two five times against them in the last three months, and we, I think we won every time. And it was pretty straightforward. Yes, uh, we just played our own game. Are you are you the best dust two team in the world right now? That's hard to say, right? We have been that. Before. Don't be modest. Well, uh, I don't want to say anything because then there will be veto it. But we're comfortable on it, yeah. Yeah, your CT half, always strong as well. Moses has mentioned it a number of times in the past. At half-time, 10-5, you're very comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, just, that's uh, really good. And we even lost an NC Eco, so that really shows that uh, we won most of the gun rounds. Talking a little wider in terms of the tournament itself, a lot of pressure on you guys this time. You've come in, you've won some big events. How do you deal with that pressure as opposed to perhaps before at, at Majors when maybe you think, yeah, we're in the running, we're in the mix, but now it's... A lot of people are making you the favorites right now. How does that change the way you approach the tournament? Um, it's hard to say. Like, we go into the tournament like every other tournament. Uh, we always want to win, and I don't think the pressure hit us yet. Maybe it will later, and we will choke. We will see, but, like, I don't know. Uh, it's just a normal tournament for us, and I think that's how we deal with it. Yeah, I think it's a sensible way of dealing with it. You try and just block everything else out. But what are the highlights so far of the first two days for you? Um, it's been like being here, feeling the like amazing, amazing atmosphere and just winning the games, of course, that's a pretty good side to it. And yeah, just not enjoying it. Yeah, winning helps, doesn't it? That's for sure. Thank you very much, Device, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Team Solo Mid, of course, through safely to the quarterfinals as expected here in Cluj Napoca. We're headed for a quick break. When we come back, we'll get the thoughts of the Intel Analysis Desk.
to the dream hack over the collusion of poker now i said this was going to be close it wasn't even team solo mid come out and destroy g2 to underline their championship credentials on dust 2 we're the intel analysis desk we've got thorin natu and james bardolf to break it down for you guys i gotta say i felt that tsm were gonna win it i respected g2 on dust 2 but tsm were just in another league guys Someone said that Cajun B, you got it right this time. The universe is, it takes from you, it gives them the other hand. Exactly. This time Cajun B came through. Obviously, Give this, and is take. A, this is a specialty map of his. He is the Unreal. And we know when he gets his AWP going, he's not like the super consistent AWP, he's like the explosive AWP. And you saw in this game, he took it over. Oh, he definitely did. did. And uh, I mean, you know, G2 had their opportunities earlier on. TSM won the first pistol, but then Mike Galella happened. He was actually the guy that really even made G2 be on the board, to be honest with you. He had to create those crazy plays and make him happen for or for G2 had to have anything going on. Mm. Yeah, he uh, had some good individual play early on, got 11 frags fairly soon. But after that, it more or less fell apart. They only had uh, one round in the second half on their CT side and only a mere five rounds on the, on the C half, which is, which is where they need to rack up mm. the rounds, really. But uh, just uh, they, they got dominated everywhere on the map. There was even an eco round where Carrigan had saved an M4 in the previous round and uh, Zipmix made his way all the way to top mid and he was just standing around admiring the walls for about 10, 15 seconds, got the first frag and after that it fell apart for uh, G2 and it just never came back. This is what I referenced earlier, really, the scary thing if you're playing TSM and you're not some god tier versus pro envy type team who have their own unique strengths is they can win both halves of both map, of on most maps, you know. So yeah. even after the first one, you knew on the second half, well, there was no let up there. It's not like it's a CT sided map. We do like, no, no, no. They're going to they're gonna give it to you on the T side as well. So there's a reason why, yeah, Dust 2 will always be an upset map. There'll always be a possibility. But every time that small possibility, that small window of opportunity doesn't come around for the upset, that'll be you getting absolutely pounded out on Dust 2. And that's not going to be fun, guys. You're like, oh, it's a skill map. You just play free for all style. Yeah. And then they play free for all style. They play their skill and you get wrecked. So sometimes you'd rather play the, the strats map in some ways, you know. Well, let's have a look at the uh, statistical breakdown of that reckoning uh, that happened uh, on G2. Uh, they're going to come up in just a second. There we go. So you can see a uh, new, new kid on the block, Jacob, not yeah. really uh, at the races. Uh, Makalela did his level best alongside Dennis. Uh, Fox again, reasonable account of himself rain up there, but then you just look down at the damage that TSM were doing. And interestingly enough, we always talk about Device's consistency and how he always gets these 20 frags. Didn't even need to do it here. Dupree did it. Cajun B was going off. Just a wonderful consistent spread that really shows just how dominant TSM were in every area. I mean, you know, this goes to show that G2 can't really have anyone absent at this point, you know. J Kim and Rain are gonna be those two impact guys. They're gonna be the aim guys going in and getting those flick shots where we're talking about like what cold can produce for for luminosity, yeah. for example. They need to be those guys. And not a lot of that going on, especially J Kim was really absent. I've got to say as well, like, obviously TSM ripped through the first game when they played against Flipside. They've smashed completely here. Um, when you come into watching Envy later on, you can't say, oh, Envy has to do it as well to be as good. TSM now, when you look at it, they had the easiest group. This wasn't a difficult group for them. Actually, almost everyone in the group has struggled to some degree. I mean, G2 only looked good because they were playing against Mouse who were under fun. I have to say, this was by far the easiest group, I think, now, after the fact, after seeing how well Luminosity is mm. played, even Vex had some time. So I think TSM's just held serve here. They just wrecked as they expected to. I don't expect that, like, NVS has to do it as well in the group stage to keep the tension going or whatever. I, 